Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to stay with the sensation of breathing as continually as you can. Any thoughts come through the mind, you don't have to follow them. Follow the breath instead. Because the breath can take you to concentration, it can take you to alertness, it can take you to mindfulness. All kinds of good qualities, if you stick with it. We live in this world of pleasures and pains. And the mind needs to be trained as to how to deal with those pleasures and pains, so as to not to turn them into suffering. This is why we meditate, it's because our happiness and our sorrow depends on, depend on the state of the mind. And the mind that hasn't been trained can take even good things and turn them into suffering. Whereas the mind that has been trained can see what can be taken out of the things of the world without having to suffer. And so all the difference lies in the mind. You've probably seen people who are very poor but very happy. Other people are very rich and miserable. People have all kinds of things that you think would make them happy, but still they're not satisfied. Whereas other people know how to make themselves happy with just a, a few things. It call, comes from having a well-trained mind, a mind that knows how to think about things. Think about itself, how you think about yourself in the world. And also mind that's not so hungry to go out and just grab at everything that comes by. When you have a sense of well-being with the breath, and this is important when you're focusing on the breath, try to make the breath comfortable. So it feels like a good place to stay. Notice where the spots in the body that are most sensitive to the breathing and allow them to feel nourished by the breath. And you'll find that when those areas get satisfied, it's a lot easier to relax into the present moment. And you're not so hungry to go out and grab this pleasure or that pleasure to try to feed off of what other people say or what they do. And that puts you in a position of strength. In other words, you don't need everything that comes past. You can choose. And putting yourself in the position where you can choose, that's an important part of training the mind. The other important part, of course, is learning good standards for choosing what's skillful and what's not, what's useful what's useless. But first it's important to give the mind a good place to stay, because then it's a lot more likely to listen to wisdom about what is worthwhile and what's not. All too often we know what's right and what's wrong, but the mind is just too frazzled to pay these things attention. We say, well, that's for somebody else or some other time. But right now I'm hungry, that's what the mind says. So feed it well, and then it will realize that okay, the teachings of wisdom are there for to be used all the time then the mind will be in a much better position to receive them and put them into practice.